Hey everyone, this is a video about changing out one of the original XRK sticks for a industrial Lorenzo stick. As you can see, I've already done this side, and it's considerably more difficult because you've got a lot more wiring in the way. So we're going to do this just for the sake of simplicity. Alright, so what are you going to need? Well, you're going to need a replacement stick. In this case, I'm doing a blue one on player one side. Uh, need some assorted pliers and such. They definitely help out. Now you're going to want a screwdriver and one of, uh, one of these guys, nut drivers. A PH2 bit, very useful. Uh, mini screwdrivers can help too, because sometimes plying this E-clip off, it's a little difficult. Uh, you want a marker, and if things get serious, <laughs> you're going to want a mallet. Uh, I'm not joking. So let's get going. For the mini screwdriver, you're going to want a pH zero bit and a little flathead like this, this guy. The first step, really, is you want to take a picture of what it is now. Use your phone, whatever. Um, but I also like doing this. So down. And I'm just recording the way these switches face, not the cardinal directions they activate. So this one's facing right. I'm going to put a little arrow there. This one's facing up, and this one's facing left. So there we go. That done, we can take... I found both the screwdriver and mini screwdriver work well here, so just lock and load. I know you can't see past my big arm here. Let me try and do it left-handed. <laughs> but it's really just undoing a screw. Pull that out, and you'll notice these rest on little tabs. So just, it comes right off, very easy. These are some of the easiest steps. So let's do that one, pull it off. Our down is really actually our right input. And if you have a cup or square, or a tray or something to put your screws in and keep them separate, that's good. You won't need these screws except to reassemble the X-Arcade lever later. It switches. Uh, you know, if you want to sell it or do whatever with it, you know, keep them aside for now. Alright, now that we've got those off, let's kind of see if we can get this mess out of the way. And you'll notice there's four screws here. You don't have to remove those. What we do need to remove are these four nuts right here. And unfortunately, because they're really close proximity to the housing here, uh, I'm going to show you this. You can't really get this in to ply them off. And forth. It just doesn't. I can't make it work. At least not my setup. Maybe you have something that works for you. I don't know. So what I do is just grab our big old trusty pliers and then kind of mine that wire. There's a wire to the side button here that's getting in the way. And just start kind of working those free. Now, especially if you're doing this side, make sure you take care because there's a lot more wiring when you do this, especially on the top. But it can be done. You just want to loosen them up with the your heavy-duty pliers here. These are... I don't know if they make these anymore. Rigid Robo Grips. And, uh, they are wonderful. So these are going to come up. Now, I believe a HAP stick will fit as well if you like Suzo for, or HAP for that. Uh, I know a lot of people are just prefer nowadays Industrial Lorenzo's, and that's what I went with. Alright, so let's start up here. I know I don't have a proper overhead set up, so it's really difficult to see. Let's see if I can remedy that a bit. Okay, let's see if you can see that better. Now I went ahead and cheated a little bit. For one, I, rotate, I loosened this guy up on the side because it was getting in the way of taking this off and if your big guy doesn't isn't getting in the corners and such you might want to consider a smaller option 
Anyway, let's go ahead and untighten these. You'll notice there's a little lock nut, or not washer underneath. Make sure you set these aside. You're going to need these later to mount the new stick. three. Now after you do this, you want to make sure, and we'll check it later of course, uh, you may have jostled some of these loose, we just want to make sure all your buttons are connected. Alright, now you can try and pull it out now, but what you're going to find is, oops, I'm stuck, that's not going to work because your bat top is still there and it's not going to fit through that hole. Alright, what you can do Take your mini screwdriver, or sometimes pliers can get in on it. Uh, I found more luck with this little guy in a flat head. Is just this is an E clip, this crescent looking thing right around here, and there's two slots. You can just fit in one, kind of wedge this thing out, and that's going to make. There we go. I'm just going to pull that loose. Remember how this goes. So you've got your sleeve, your dust washer. So make sure I'm showing it. You have your sleeve goes on first, and there's a little rounded edge there, which the dust washer fits on, and then this cylinder thing fits on the end here. So we'll just set that aside. And now we've plied this off. Make sure you keep that E-clip. You're not going to use it on the new stick, but you are going to reassemble that. That done. Oops, that came off too. That's fine. We have our bolts. We can leave them in. And what I would recommend is that these guys are a little, they're a little big and they'll fit in these holes, but you might want to screw them through once just to get them ready. It's kind of hard to do once you get there. Because, as you'll see, these are smooth. You can't just put a screwdriver in them. And when you want to get them flush against the surface. Now the same thing applies to the, uh, you're not going to get this bat top through like so, so we're going to have to do the same thing. And we're just going to, you may need use a smaller, yeah, no this works, just kind of wiggle it in there and then wiggle it loose. Okay, there we go. Set that aside, pull this out, and make sure you have the dust washer on and this little white sleeve here. That said, we can slot it up, but we're still kind of getting these ready. That's number two. There's number three. Now I did find when I did this with the other side, the tops were actually the ones up here were easier to do than the bottom ones. I had to fuss with the bottom ones a bit more than I liked, but hey, maybe that's life. Okay. Now I did say before you should have oops, one of these socket guys, but we didn't use it to remove it. Well, the good news is because we don't have the same body surround on this guy, you can use it to reinstall it. It makes things a lot faster. Okay, now with these screws, what you'll notice, 
I've already pointed out they have a smooth head, like so. So you can't put a screwdriver in there and hold it in. But they also have a square under thing. I don't even know what to call it. And then they're just you know regular screws. So when you put it in, it's going to notch into these square holes. Now let's see if we can get lucky. Notch a couple of these in. And it does not matter if you flip it because it's the switches on the bottom that determine what's up, what's down, what's left, what's right. So if you think, oh no, there's only one way for this to go, no, you're fine. Try and line this up. Oh, that's not it. I can, I can tell. Yeah, that's definitely not it. All right, let's try flipping it over. mounting holes do match up, you're fine. You shouldn't have to modify. Um, of course, it might. you might have a slightly different model of X-Arcade. I can't tell. I'm only familiar with the one I have. So in this case, they're no, it's not going to just slide in. These holes are a little bit smaller than the X-Arcades. Um, what you want to do is screw in as far as you can and get it lined up so that the square shaped matches up there. Push it in. Now it's going to notch up here so that's not flush. What you do, just put on the nut for now and we'll drive that in. Now because you have that a notch built in. This should go in. Now I have a three, I believe this is a three six bit. It's a little small, but it does the job. So that'll pull it in. From here, you can kind of lather, rinse, repeat with the other four screws. And I'll see you in a minute once I'm done with that, because it's no fun just to watch it. all the screws in and remember what you want to do is just get that screw as much as you can in use just the nut to kind of tighten it in and press it up from the bottom to make sure that gets flush screw it on that'll pull the rest of this through all right now, once you've done that you can take them off and then put on your lock washer Usually, the first time around, you're just not going to have enough thread to get both of these on. Um, but if you can get it further, you know, maybe you can save a step. And then just put your nut back on, and let's bolt that down. Now, I've cheated and went ahead and done the other three already, so we are pretty good to go. All right. Let's just make sure they're tightened up. And there we go. All right, our base is pretty locked in. That's not going anywhere. Next step is we need to connect our wires. So we've got this a bit of a tangled mess here. And remember that we're not saying, hey, this maps to up. This maps to the switch that points up. So you can attack this in any order you like. These kind of go around, so yeah, whichever. Let's start with this one since it just happens to be in my hands. Now these are quick disconnects, but they've been on here for a while, so they're kind of... Oh, that one did go. And this one is the, for the one that faces right, so it's the one all the way down here. And I cannot remember for the life of me. If I don't plug it in immediately, I'll forget it. We want to just test to make sure, is this going to pull off right away? No, it feels like it's good. If it's not, your small pliers are good for just giving a little bit of a squeeze to these connectors. And yeah, so 
all I do is just give this a bit of a squeeze, nothing hard. You don't really need to crush these. If you do, you're going to just ruin the connector and you might have to make your own or solder it on. That's no good. You don't want to have to do that. All right. So that was for my one facing right. And you're always going to use the connector since these cherry switches have three. You're just going to use the connector nearest to the top connector, never this bottom one. What this does is um, it says, oh, this is on until I move it in the direction and turn it off. So if we did that, this would be like pressing down all the time. All right, we'll set that switch aside, and you just repeat for the other three. So I'll see you back here once we've done that. have our wires reconnected so we have one final step to get this joystick installed all right now we just need to take this assembly and the little e-clip guy push it through make sure this white little stopper is there now you can't see it let me yeah let's work on that okay so you'll push it through, and this I found I had to put it in my lap and kind of use, because this almost takes a third hand. You'll push this down, and there's a little groove on this silver post. You're going to slide this E-clip on, and there's I don't think there's a way I can do it without using a third hand here. It's just, when you if I push on this, that's not going to stay. But let's try it. Oh, no. Let's try it around right the table and maybe that'll work. It's always fun trying to bounce 15 things. All right. Yeah, this will work. So just push that down enough. I'm not getting quite enough leverage to compress the spring. That's inside. Oh, come on. I'm not lining up right. This can be a bit finicky. <clears throat> anyway, you should feel it snap on, and then that will retain the joystick in place. Now that I'm on camera, it doesn't want to work. <laughs> I'm going to take a moment and cheat. As you can see, I totally got it on after recording. And if you have trouble, uh, pliers can help. You just want to look for the notch that's right underneath here once you start compressing this, and it'll start working. Okay, let's take a look. Oh, beautiful. Two sticks. I move them around, I get nice satisfying clicks, so we're good to go. And of course, these are modified with IL buttons. Uh, I switched out the XRK blacks for a Xbox style color scheme, so there's that too. I retained the original buttons here, so you still have the first and play second player, and have the side buttons were also replaced, but I kept the top button because it's pretty generic didn't feel like it needed it. I did replace the switch inside, so there's that. So these are nice and flush, and these are secure. So mission accomplished there. What do we do? What's next? Well, you can, of course, make sure everything's battened down. You want to make sure that in the fuss of installing your sticks, you did not disconnect any buttons there. So if you're replacing the buttons, I recommend you do that afterwards. But let's talk about putting this bad boy back together because, you know, maybe you want to sell it or just keep it or whatever. Anyway, let's, you'll need the parts here. So there's this little collar, another collar. The dust washer fits in between those. And that comes in through the top, like so. Now you should have another piece that looks like this. Fits on top. And then you'll just, just like before, and hopefully I can get it this time. Press it down, you'll notice the notch. Slide this in. 
I will cheat if I have to. I guess using tools isn't really cheating, but hey. Alright. When my fingers are a little fresher, it's easier, but uh, that E-clip is back on. And now that sticks. But you get no satisfying clicks. Hmm, because, well, we don't have any switches in. So let's just put them back in. Oops, oh, there it is. And it's really just line up your switches, and at this point it doesn't even matter if you line up the label ones you labeled. Um, but I'm going to do it anyway, just, you know, because I'd feel weird if I didn't. And with that, we're pretty much done with changing out a joystick on an X-Arcade. This and other videos, check out my channel. Make sure you like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And if you have questions, com you know, leave a comment. I'll try and answer them. Uh, I'm also frequently on the All Fight Sticks Discord, so you can find me there as well. Thanks. Have a great night. Just a note on if you're having trouble with any of these quick disconnects, they're you know too tough to pull off. First of all, try to pull from about the metal back part here that'll get you the best leverage without you know, more risk of damaging the components don't pull by the wire that can pull it right out and you'd have to make the quick disconnect again or you know, what have you that's just going to create a mess but if it's really not coming off it's you know been a while then you might just want to use a very small flathead on your mini screwdriver slide under and just kind of wiggle those kind of those fins up a little bit just enough and see if you can get some release now almost guaranteed when you do that you're gonna have to squeeze it back down so just use your pliers give them a little bit of a squeeze nothing too hard and then give it a shot There we go. Perfect. Now if you pull and it comes loose, then you're not firm enough. Or you just need to give it a little bit more squeezing with the pliers and you'll be set to go. All right. Hey, this is just some bonus content on if you have one of these IL HAP style old school buttons, how do I get the Cherry switch in, or whatever switch you're using? So this is a Cherry ZF switch, and you'll see. notice there are two kind of pins on this end, and the easiest way is just notch the first pin into a hole in the bottom. Make sure this grounding tab is on the top, and put it in there, kind of slide it down, and gently nudge the top fin and then it'll snap in and you know you're ready to go and we're connected that's it and if you want to remove it all you do is just the opposite kind of nudge this pin oops come on fingernails do your job well there we go nudge it out and push the cherry switch up and out and then